Thanks. It's, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you this afternoon. Uh, and uh, uh, you've heard about uh, many of the concepts of immunotherapy, which hold true for uh, melanoma, and uh, as we're finding out uh, recently, uh, for several other kinds of, of cancers, at least, uh, as well. So I, I think that uh, you all realize the uh, pr issue with melanoma, which is that it is one of the cancers that is um, in the ra most rapid um, rate of rise um, of any of the uh, uh, any cancer in the United States. Uh, so in 2014, uh, we expect about 76,000 new cases of melanoma in the U.S. and nearly 10,000 uh, deaths from this disease. Um, it is one of the most common cancers in, in young adults. Uh, the five-year survival is much better uh, than it was uh, 10 or 20 years ago, but it is still um, not breaking 15 percent across the board, even with all of the new promising uh, drugs that, that have come into the uh, clinic recently. Um, and so we know that we still have a lot of work to do in advancing uh, therapy for melanoma and especially uh, for patients with stage 4 disease. Now, many years ago, um, we had the first hint uh, that melanoma would respond to immunotherapy. And what I'm showing you here is uh, a chest X-ray of a patient with melanoma uh, who was treated in 1987 at the National Cancer Institute um, I, when I was working there. Uh, and we found that simply... Um, directing a drug against the immune system, because that's what IL-2 does. It, it, it purely has an immunological mode of action. It does not directly attack, attack cancer cells. But simply with this maneuver, we could cause the regression of very advanced uh, melanomas. And this could occur quickly, as I'm, uh, as I'm showing you here in this, in this slide. So we saw durable uh, melanoma regressions in about 16% of all the patients that we treated. And this was extremely encouraging. Um, on the other hand, hand, uh, this is a treatment that needs to be given in the hospital, uh, and the associated side effects um, have limited um, the use of this uh, treatment. Most recently, as you heard in the previous sessions, um, with um, sequencing of the DNA of cancers, uh, we've realized that melanoma has one of the highest mutational burdens or mutation rates of any uh, human cancers. And um, while this has created um, challenges for using targeted therapies against melanoma, uh, and by this I mean drugs like BRAF inhibitors and MEK inhibitors, um, it actually creates opportunities for immunotherapy because, as you heard previously at this meeting, um, these mutations can create new proteins that have never been seen before by the immune system, and they can be very powerful stimulants uh, for anti-tumor immune responses. So these mutations, while they are very numerous and very diverse, uh, can create a common denominator um, for immunotherapy. In many ways, the immune system is, is an ideal anti-melanoma agent. Uh, and you heard about this uh, this morning from Dr. Pardol, uh, that the immune system has properties that we want to engage in, in anti-melanoma therapy. Um, it's very diverse, and so the T cells and B cells in, in your immune system uh, can recognize an almost limitless number of different entities. Uh, and in the case of a highly mutated tumor like melanoma, uh, this diversity is good because it means that the immune system has the opportunity to attack melanoma from many different um, perspectives. Um, the immune system is highly specific, uh, meaning that if we use it properly, it should attack tumor cells and not spill over into normal cell um, inflammation. And the memory component of the immune system means that the effect can continue to percolate uh, even after we stop giving the drug that we're using to, to tweak anti-tumor immunity. So despite all of this, um, what we have found is that the natural balance between melanoma and the immune system is something that we call tolerance rather than rejection. So the immune system and the body tolerate the presence of melanoma. Um, we often observed um, that we could look at melanomas under the microscope, and I'm showing you an example here, um, where we, we would see sheets of tumor cells, which are the larger cells, um, but we would also see 
see sheets of infiltrating immune cells, which are the small, um, round, purple cells. Uh, and so the tumor and the immune system is coexisting. Um, these immune cells are not capable of destroying the tumor cell, and, and the question is why. So as a result of a lot of hard work in the laboratory by, by many groups over the past 15 to 20 years, um, we realized that the natural balance between the immune system and melanoma is this tolerance um, uh, situation, and we actually could define what the different tolerance mechanisms are. And it's only by defining these that the, we can then work out solutions. We can um, design therapies to disrupt these tolerance mechanisms, and the objective then is to rejuvenate uh, immune responses against melanoma in a way that the immune system can destroy melanoma. So I'm showing you here three broad categories of tolerance, um, including on the left, regulatory immune cells. So there are cells called Tregs and other cells called MDSCs, um, whose function it is to dampen immunity. Um, in the middle there, we have immune suppressive cytokines. And, and you heard a bit about these. There can be cytokines um, that... Um, uh, make the immune system more aggressive, such as IL-2, but there are other cytokines that can suppress um, the immune system, such as IL-6 and IL-10. And then we have these T cell inhibitory receptors, uh, what we call checkpoints, that are displayed on activated T cells. This is part of normal immune biology. Uh, the normal function of, of all of these mechanisms is to turn off immune responses at the right time so that they don't uh, continue on indefinitely and destroy normal tissues. Um, every immune um, response has a job to do. It's directed against a specific tar target, like a virus or a bacterium or a tumor cell. Once the target is eliminated, the immune system is supposed to turn off that response. But what you've seen in the previous talks this morning is that tumors can co-opt some of these normal protective mechanisms um, to escape immune elimination. And so our job is to rejuvenate these responses. So I'm going to very briefly uh, today talk about three different approaches um, to overcoming immune tolerance. Uh, so on the left there, uh, you see in order to overcome some of these regulatory immune cells or cytokines, um, we can use melanoma vaccines. Um, we can also take immune cells out of the body and manipulate them in the laboratory and then infuse them back into the patient, and that's called adoptive cell transfer, or ACT. And then on the right side for these immune checkpoints, we can develop uh, drugs that block the checkpoints um, and so reactivate anti-melanoma immunity. Now, Melanoma vaccines have been in the clinic for over 20 years, and there are many varieties of, of these vaccines. Um, some are designed to activate immune responses against what we call shared melanoma antigens. These are proteins that are expressed in most melanoma patients. Um, they are not mutated proteins, and for that re reason, they're actually weak stimulus. Thank you. But um, you may recognize the names of some of these um, vaccines. They're uh, vaccines against uh, molecules like GP100 or MAJ3, and they've been in the form of uh, peptides or proteins or even um, viruses that have been engineered in the laboratory. You heard a little bit about that this morning um, to express uh, melanoma proteins. Um, these um, types of vaccines um, were not very successful um, in many, many clinical trials in which they were uh, tested when they were used um, as single agents, when they were used by themselves. And then we have other kinds of vaccines um, which are designed to incorporate these mutated uh, molecules that we find in, in melanoma cells. Um, and so... Um, some of them are, uh, are composed of viruses, um, inactivated viruses that are locally injected into sites of melanoma. Um, there is also the possibility that irradiating individual spots of melanoma uh, can act uh, in a way as a vaccine uh, that can then have a spillover effect to other sites of melanoma in the same patient. I think Dr. Walchuk is going to talk a little bit about this um, in this session. And so there are many ways 
ways to kill tumor cells which by themselves might, might not be effective enough, but they create um, disruption of tumor cells uh, in a way that can uh, jolt immune responses. And then if you combine these with drugs like anti-CTLA-4 or anti-PD-1, that combination uh, can be very powerful. So even though vaccines by themselves have not been that effective. Um, I think vaccines may have a renaissance uh, in the next few years now in combination with the checkpoint blocking uh, drugs that, that you're hearing about today. As for adoptive cell transfer, this is a very broad landscape. There are many varieties of, of ACT. Um, I'm showing here some of the different kinds of ACT uh, that have been used in clinical trials in melanoma, um, ranging from uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, which are grown in bulk from um, surgically removed melanoma lesions, um, all the way to individual T cell clones, which are highly specialized and, and uh, need to be uh, grown under very special conditions in the laboratory and are very difficult to generate. Um, so it turns out, after many years of research, that actually um, the highest response rates that we saw in patients with melanoma were with these uh, more diverse populations of T cells uh, before we started trying to fine-tune and manipulate them. And it may be because... Um, some of these T cells are seeing different mutated antigens in the melanoma, as well as some of those shared antigens uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, one approach that uses genetic engineering is called chimeric, chimeric antigen receptors. These are molecules that can be introduced into the laboratory, into immune cells that are circulating in the blood, and they can endow a T cell uh, with new targeting properties. And so this really is a merger of T cell activation properties with the specificity of an antibody. And you heard about antibodies um, this morning. There are many ways... Uh, that these can be constructed or engineered in the laboratory, and there's a lot of science that goes behind this to make uh, the ideal um, receptor that is uh, powerful enough but not too powerful, because if they're too powerful, again, you start uh, having too much destruction of, um, uh, of other tissues that, uh, be besides the tumor. Um, certain CARs have been effective in patients um, with adult and childhood leukemias. Um, they are under development uh, now for treating melanoma. Um, it's not clear uh, whether this um, is going to be an advantage in melanoma immunotherapy or for other solid tumors. Um, I think um, the trials in the next uh, few years um, will, will tell us. <clears throat> 